Okay, good morning, everyone, and Hazak Baruch. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday morning as we are studying together Perashat Bechukotai. Our Perashat lists the blessings if we observe, and then it lists the curses if, God forbid, one does not observe. And our Perashat begins with the famous Pasuk, and this is the name of our Perashat Bechukotai. Im Bechukotai Telechu. If you will walk in my ways. And you will keep my commandments. And you observe them. Then God says, I will give you the Geshem, I will give you the rain, I will give you the Gashmiyut, I will give you the blessings. You want blessings in life, says the Pasuk. The blessing comes when we observe the Torah, when we observe the commandments. We observe the commandments, we get all the blessings. However, if we notice the first Pasuk is a little bit repetitive. What does it mean? Im behukotai telechu. And how does that differ from the next phrase, Ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru? Ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru already means if you keep my commandments. So then what is behukotai telechu adding? If you will walk in my ways, it's the same thing as keeping the commandments. And there are many ideas of here, but there's one beautiful answer that I saw yesterday in the Sefer of here that we're using, Lekah Tov, the word, the Sefer Lekah Tov, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff going on, my friends. And um, we just see who he quotes over here. He quotes over here the Bet Yitzhak, <clears throat> Rav Matityahu, uh, from Vilna. It's, he quotes over here a Gemara, a very famous Gemara that we've quoted in the past. Masechet Berachot, please pay attention, my friends, if you're taking notes. Here we go, Masechet Berachot, page 35, okay? If you're taking notes, page 35, Daf. The Gemara here asks a contradiction. Okay, here we go. Everyone ready? Contradiction. Pasuk number one. We say it every day. It says, And it will be that if you listen, If we listen to God's commandments, how does the Pasuk continue? Then, you will gather your produce, tiroshecha, your, your grapes, ve'itzarecha, your oils, yes. So we're going to gather our produce. It's a bracha, okay? You're going to have bracha. You're going to gather all the food from your fields. Nice blessing. But Gemara says there can be something better than that. What could be better than me collecting my produce? Gemara says someone else collecting your produce. <laughs> and matter of fact, there is a pasuk. The pasuk says, Ve'amdu zarim ve'ra'u sonechem. Strangers will shepherd for you on your behalf. So here's the contradiction. The Shema, we say every day that you're going to have to do your own hard work. You're going to have to do your own shepherding. You're going to have to gather and harvest. But the pasuk says in, uh, in the Navi, Ve'amdu zarim ve'ra'u sonechem. That the enemy, not enemy, strangers will do your work for you. You're going to have servants. You're going to have workers, you're going to have employees. So which one is it? Will I have to do the work or will I have other people doing my work for me? Says the Gemara, it depends, it depends. Where you're doing God's will, then the strangers will do your work for you. Khan, but here in Shema we're talking about En Osin Retzono Shemakom, where they're not doing God's will. What does it mean they're not doing God's will? They're not doing, they're not doing, the, therefore you're going to have to do it yourself. You're not following so much that you're going to have to do it yourself. Okay? This is a nice answer. So again, we see, like our parasha begins, when we go in the ways of the Torah, we're going to get people to do our work for us. If we're not going in the ways of the Torah, then we're going to have to do it ourselves. Only one problem. How can you tell me that the Pasuk Ve'asavta Deganecha, which is referring to the lesser blessing, a lower level that you're going to have to work yourself. How can he tell me that that's talking about a time in the scenario where the Jews are not observing? The paragraph begins with the words, Ve'haya im shamu The words of the paragraph are, and it will be if you listen. So it's talking about a situation where we are listening. We are doing the mitzvot. Shamu'a tishmeu mitzvotai. The reward of listening is, Ve'asavta deganecha. So ask Tosfot, how could you tell me that that very paragraph is talking about a Jew that's not listening? If the paragraph starts off with the words, and if you listen, this is Tosafot's question on the Gemara. And Tosafot has an answer. Tosafot, his answer is a little bit ambiguous. His answer is, they're doing, but there's something missing. 
There's something missing, says Tosfot. Yes, the Shamoa Tishmeru, the doing, like the Pasuk says, et mitzvotai tishmeru, but there's something more than just doing. What's missing from this type of Jew in the second paragraph of Shema? There is actually something that's not only missing in this person, but there's actually words missing in the second paragraph. If we open up to the first paragraph of Shema for one moment and compare the, the, um, the commandments, the first paragraph says, Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha you should love God. Let's count. How many different ways are we supposed to love God? How many ways does the Pasuk list? Three. Number one. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your... Anyone? Money. Okay? I don't know if you knew that. Bechol me'odecha. We say it every day. We should know what we're saying. Bechol me'odecha. Different ways of interpreting me'odecha. Okay? Me'odecha could also be with your, uh, whatever situation God is handing out to you. Whatever phase in life you are. Bechol me'odecha. But simply it means with all your money. And the Gemara says, we need to tell you with all your life. And we need to tell you with all your money. Because some people, their life is more valuable. But some people, their money is more valuable. So whatever kind of person you are, serve God with it. If, if for you, nothing more important than your life, be ready to give up your life for Hashem. If nothing's more important than your money, be ready to give up your money for Hashem. Okay? And really, our generation today is not tested with the first. No one's killing us for being Jewish. Baruch Hashem, we had a beautiful Israeli Day Parade. There was no one hurting us. The government is watching us. They're protecting us. They give us police officers. We don't live today, thank God, in a time that we're really... Of course, there's you know, individual incidents here and there, isolated events. But for the most part, thank God, we're able to practice and worship freely. We walk in the, keep, with the, street, in the street with a kippah. Baruch Hashem. We have synagogues. We're proud. We walk around Wall Street. Jews fill, you know, filled with Jews that have kippahs on and girls that are dressed sanua. Everyone knows you're Jewish and nobody cares. Thank God. But today we're not tested with Bechol Nafshecha. Today no one's asking us to die to be a Jew. Our test really is the next words. Bechol Me'odecha. Our test is, are we ready to give up money to be a Jew? A lot of times when something starts hitting our pockets, oh, we start having second, guess, second guesses, we start doubting. I'm not sure. Do I really need it? Uh, I think it should be kosher. It's not a big deal. Why do I have to spend so much extra for the kosher brand? Uh, I, I don't know. I think I think you're allowed. I heard is a type of contract that you could write up. Right? We all have mitzvot that we're ready to keep, but are we ready to keep them when it's going to incur a financial loss? Bechol meodecha. That's what the first paragraph is telling us. But you know what the problem is, my friends, look at the second paragraph. We have a very similar pasuk. Le'ahava. You have to love. Et Adonai Elohechem u'lovdo. You have to love God and serve Him. Bechol levavchem u'bchol nafshechem. Period. The second paragraph is missing. Bechol me'odecha. It says bechol levavchem u'bchol nafshechem. And that is what I think Tosfot is trying to say. The second Jew, the Jew in the second paragraph of Shema, he's Jewish, but he's Jewish, <laughs> right? He's ready to be a Jew, but there's something missing. You know what's missing? Bechol me'odecha. He's missing when it hits his pocket. When it comes to financially, all of a sudden, having second, right? Or having doubts. I'm not sure. Second guessing myself. And this is the difference, says Tosfot, between a Jew that will have others do for him versus a Jew that will have... You can have two guys that go through the same exact day schedule. The, both of them wake up, they go to shul, they pray with Minyan, they go learn for an hour afterwards, they go to work, they're praying Minha in the middle of the day, they come home, they go to learn again. Two Jews, same schedule. But you know what separates the men from the boys? What happens when all of a sudden there's a meeting? And you have a, to make a very important meeting with someone who's... Uh, an important salesman or buyer, a vendor, it doesn't matter who. 
And now you have a big business financial opportunity. Then how committed are we when we have to maybe lose money? Are we ready to lose money for our mitzvot? Are we ready to lose money for HaKadosh Baruch Hu? The first paragraph of, of the Shema, Bechol Me'odecha. The second paragraph, the Jew is serving, but he's not ready to do it when there's a financial loss. He's missing the Bechol Me'odecha. And this is something that really uh, we have to all ask ourselves. You know the word Chok, Bechukotai. What does Chok mean? Chok means a law. There's chukim, there's laws of nature. You know it's a law? When I take this bottle, I drop it. One, two, let's count. Three. Who thinks it's going to happen 10 out of 10 times? Think it's going to happen 10 out of 10, it's going to fall. Let's see. Four. Okay, five. Pretty good. Six. Wow. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. You know why? Because gravity is a law of nature. When there's a law, it's a law. It happens no matter what. Bechukotai, God says, I need you to be not just a Jew that's listening to the mitzvot, but I need you to be committed. I need you to be Bechukotai type of Jew. I need you to be ready to do mitzvot even when it means a financial loss, even when it means incurring a little bit of a hit to my pocket. That's a commitment. That's what Hashem wants to see. Are we ready? And we all have values, Baruch Hashem. We all have mitzvot that we do and everyone on a different level. Whatever your level of Shabbat observance is, whatever your level of kosher is, it doesn't matter. We're all different levels and we're all growing at our own pace, Baruch Hashem. But the question is, whatever is our level, are we consistent on that level even when it's hard? I know my level is, this is what I keep as far as kosher is concerned. Okay. Again, everyone has, I have a different level than you, you have a different level than her. Everyone's a different level. Yeah, I eat meat out. I don't eat meat out, but I eat in the house kosher meat. I eat a dairy, bar, fish. Okay, whatever is your level. But are we at least bechukotai with that level? Are we chok velo ya'avor? It's a rule and I will never violate this level. Even if it means losing money. Of course, if our lives are on the line, I'm not talking about that. If our lives are on the line, you, no problem. Eat not kosher. If our lives, we're not, but most of the time, again, today, we're not bechol nafshecha. No one's forcing us to die. But for the for, for money, for to incur a little bit of a loss, do, are we consistent with our values? We just read Pirashat Shemitah. What is Shemitah? Shemitah is a guy closing his field for a year. Can you imagine how hard that is? For a year? Again, it's hard for me to relate because I I work on Shabbat. <laughs> I work on Yom Kippur, I work on holidays as a rabbi, you know. Okay, one day I'll get to your level. But uh, even businessmen that have to close their work on Shabbat, it's a hard test. Once a week, it's hard. Imagine closing for a year, and yet the Torah says, you gotta do it. Shemitah, big test. And really it's a test of bitachon, of faith, of trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a person relinquishing and letting go and saying, God, I believe that you're in charge. And a person realizes that what we're doing is nothing. And the Torah is telling us something very powerful. And that is that faith, bitachon, to say I believe in God is not enough to say it. It's not enough to just say the words I believe. One has to be ready to lose money for their belief. I have to be ready to keep Shabbat to show. In English we say, are we ready to put our money where our, where our mouths are? We have to be ready to lose. Because or else it's just words. Actions in life speak much louder than words. It's true with faith. It's true with integrity. It's true with love. I could say to my spouse, I love you, but am I doing what they want? Am I there for them when they need? Am I giving them everything that they're asking for? Because to just say I love you, but I'm not actually doing love, then that's just, words are cheap. And this is the question of our parasha. Bechukotai telechu. Are we ready to go, but not just go in the mitzvot? Are we ready to be consistent and committed to our mitzvot? Yomara tells us in Masichet Shabbat, page 31. Take a look, my friends, uh, at a very powerful Gemara. Daf Lamed Aleph, Amud Aleph. Open it up quickly. The Gemara tells us, you know, after 120, 
Everything that we're doing down here, by the way, we have to realize is really preparing for the next world. Okay, we don't always remember that. But this world, this is the, this is like the, uh, this is studying right here, and there's going to be a test. This whole world, we're preparing for the test. Okay, there's going to be one big test, bigger than the SATs and the BJEs and the, uh, the CATs and whatever, your MCATs and your law, the bar, whatever it is. Every test that you ever took in your life, they're important tests. Sometimes we take physical tests. Sometimes we have mental tests. Whatever tests we take in life. But the most important test is the test that's going to come when a person passes away. The day of a person's passing, they take a very big important test. This is their only test that matters. This is the test of history. And this is not a test on how much, you know, how much... Uh, you know, math this is not a test on, you know, uh, geography or biology or science. It's not a test like that. You know what this test is on? This is a test. The Gemara tells us actually what the test is about. The Gemara tells us what the questions will be. How nice is that? You want to know them? Should I share them with you? I can give them to you right now for free if you like. Okay, Venmo me 50 bucks and I'll... Okay, fine. Here we go for free. So... Here is the test. I'm giving you the cheat sheet. Okay, it used to be when we were kids, we had to sneak into the uh, copy room and steal the final. Today, I'm giving you the answer. The Gemara tells us that hey, here is the final test. I'm giving you the questions before the test begins. Question number one. When they bring you up to Shamayim, Omrim Lord, they're going to ask you. Number one, Nasata Venatata Beemuna. Were we honest? Were we honest in business? Question number one. How are we doing so far? One for one? We're good? Okay, great. Let's move on. Number two. They're not going to ask you, by the way, how much money did you have? They're not going to ask you, did you have 10 employees or 50 employees? doesn't say that here. The only one that matters is, were you honest in business? That's what matters. Were you honest? And again, not how many... Be'az did you make a week? No one cares about the sales. They didn't care about that here. How much square feet was your warehouse? That's not uh, what matters. What matters is, were you honest? Okay, number two. Kavata itim la Torah. Did you... What does that mean? Kavata itim la Torah. Say it, go ahead. What does it mean? Did you... Learn Torah, right? If you said that, it's incorrect. Okay, I hope you didn't say Okay, if you said that, I'm happy you said that because it's the wrong answer. Kavata aitim la Torah does not mean did you learn Torah. It means kavata, did you set time to learn Torah? Were you koveya aitim? Did you have a set hour of the day? This is where I learn. Nothing budges it. Nothing moves it. I'm unavailable. Mrs. Secretary, Anyone calls, I'm learning right now. Schedule everything in the day around 10 and 11 o'clock because that's my hour that I am learning. Kavata itim. They're not going to ask you if you learn for 10 hours a day. You know why, says the Ben Ishchai? There's a law in halacha. I want to tell you halacha law right now. There's a law in halacha. Okay, it's a complicated law to understand. I'll share with you. Kol kavua ke mehza al mehza dame. That means anything that's set, anything that's permanent, anything that's kavua, we could view it as 50-50. Can I give you an example of what that means? You go into a marketplace, there's 10 meat stores, there's 10 butchers. Okay, now today, this case is so impractical. But go back to the Gemara's time, where there were no storefronts, there was no sign. Okay, there were 10 butchers. Nine of them are kosher. One of them, not kosher. You go into one of the stores, you buy a piece of meat, you come out, you're staring down at your piece of meat, you're like, holy cow. <laughs> Literally, right? Okay, fine. Holy cow, which store did I buy this piece of meat from? And I go, I think, I don't know, I don't, you turn around and you're not sure which store did you get it from. Whole, a whole big shook, bunch of stores, they all look the same, you don't remember where you bought it from. There's no security camera, okay? Take out any other option of finding out. You don't know. Make believe you can't find out. There's no wrapping. It doesn't say in the bag. You don't have a, a bag with a, the prime sign. You know, nothing, okay? 
You have a piece of meat, you don't remember which store, nine of them are kosher, one of them is not kosher. What is the halacha? Could you eat the meat or no? Okay, so if you know the laws of halacha, okay, ask the meat, okay? I've never heard that one before. I guess the Gemara didn't think of that one. Okay, yeah, so says really there's a law in halacha. You ready? We know there's the rule that we have, ribui b'shi'urim. What does that mean? That means, rubo kekulo. What does that mean? That means that usually in halacha we go after the majority. So as an example, if I have two pieces of meat and the third piece of meat falls in, and again, three pieces of meat, two of them are kosher, and a third piece of meat from my non-Jewish friend who was hanging out by my house fell in, and I can't tell which meat is which. Can't tell. So you have three pieces of meat, two of them are kosher, one of them is not kosher. You know what we say usually? We say it's batel berov. Majority wins, and you could have all three pieces of meat. Okay, now again, don't use this, please, halakha said today. There's always a lot of details and provisos, etc. But in general, we go after the majority. So if that's the case, let's go back to our stores. Nine stores, one of them is not kosher. What, are you, what should be the halakha? Majority, right? Says the Gemara, no. No, in this case, you cannot eat a piece of meat. Why? Why don't I go after majority? Because says the Gemara, kol kavua ke mechza al mechza dame. Anytime you have something that's set in one place, it's viewed as 50-50. And since this store is stationary, it's 50-50, even though it's outnumbered one to nine. Says the Ben Ishchai, if that's true with pieces of meat, when we go to Shamayim, they're not going to ask you how many hours a day did you learn. But they are going to ask you, was your hour kavua? If it's kavua, then we view it as 50-50. Then we view half of your day as if you learned. But it has to be kavua. It has to be kavata itim la Torah. It has to be set. It has to be permanent. It has to be, this is my hour. This is my class. This is nothing. No business deal. No offer. No show. Nothing in the world is going to push this off. Okay, this is a commitment that's needed. Again, there's always exceptions. I'm not saying there's no exceptions. Okay, a person has something that comes up, have to go. But in general, I'm ready to lose money even. I'm ready to lose money. For my learning, for my praying, for my Shabbat. Kivi Bernard, a short story I've shared with you in the past. Kivi Bernard, he wrote an amazing book on leopardo leopardology, how to learn from leopards, about how to hunt for profit in a tough, you know, global economy. And he, it was a number one seller, and he was reached out to by one of the seniors at Microsoft. They were having a conference, and they wanted him to be the keynote speaker. Do you imagine at a Microsoft conference and Bill Gates himself is going to be there and this guy, Kivi Bernard, a Jew from South Africa, very excited. And he says, of course, he looks at his calendar. What's the date? Let me just make sure that I'm free. And they give him the date. He says, I'm sorry, I can't. He said, what's the problem? He says, uh, it's the Shabbat. It's the Sabbath. The guy hangs up. He gets a phone call a few minutes later from the vice president of Microsoft. Mr. Kivi Bernard, we want you to be a keynote speaker, please. Uh, how about we double what we told you? We'll triple the price. We'll fill out the check. We write the check, you fill it out. Whatever you like. It's not about money. It's about Sabbath observance. I cannot make it on that day. The guy frustrated. He hangs up the phone. He calls him back 30 minutes later. He says, okay, we moved the entire conference to Sunday. You better be there. He's like, okay, no problem. I'll do it for triple the price. <laughs> and he shows up that day. He speaks. It was great. Six months later, he gets a phone call from this vice president. Listen to the story, my friends. He gets a phone call. And he says, I want to tell you, I was on Bill Gates' uh, private jet. We were together traveling. And I told him about this uh, convention that we had. And I told him how there was this Jewish guy who was the keynote speaker. Originally, the whole event was planned for Saturday. We had everything ready to go. We booked the venue, everything for Saturday, but this guy couldn't make it. And we threw all sorts of money at him. He just wouldn't budge. And eventually we had to move it to Sunday just for this one guy. And Bill Gates nodded and he said, that's what happens when you have something 
that money can't buy. Do we have something in our lives, my friends, that we are ready to lose money for? At what point are we, are we able to say, this is more important than money? Money is important. I've, I've, I need it. I, I want it. I like it. But up to here. This, I'm not ready to make money for. I'm, money is not as important to me as this. What is that? Do we have that? We need to have that. It has to be something. Because if, if we're not ready to lose money, if, if we don't have something that's more important than money, then how can we say that we're living? Living life, my friends, means that we have something that's, more, that's greater than life itself. So this is kavata itim la Torah. This is what it means. We're setting aside time every single day for our learning. Our gedolim, our gedolim, no matter who came to the office, he once had very wealthy people. The gabai came, he says, Rabbi, I have these two big shots that are outside. They want to come. They want to give you a nice donation. They want to give you a, you know, or they want to get a bracha, you know? And Nacham just said, I'm sorry. Let them come in an hour. I'm learning right now. The guy's like, well, Rabbi, did you hear me? I'm talking about big guys right now. They're going to fill out big checks. They're going to cover the whole yeshiva's budget. Whatever you need. Someone just said, I heard you. I heard you. I'm not available. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm learning. This is my hour. Kavata itim la Torah. Remember, if our values end at our pocketbooks, then how valuable are they? It's a very powerful line. If our values end at our pocketbooks, how valuable are they? So we have to reach the point of Bechol Me'odecha, my friends. Bechol Me'odecha means even for money. The second paragraph of Shema, the guy is doing Bechol Levavcha. He's doing Bechol Nafshecha, but he's missing it. He just does the first two. And therefore, the Pasuk says, says to Asfot, he's doing, but there's something missing. Okay? So this is the first type of Jew. Are we ready to sacrifice money for our laws? Okay, so that's, I think, a very powerful lesson. And I think it explains the words of the Shema, of the, of the Pasuk. Our parasha is called Bechukotai. What does that mean, Bechukotai? The word Chukotai comes from the word Chok. Chok means it's a law. You see this bottle of water? Guess what's going to happen when I drop it? You got it. It's going to fall. Guess what happens again? It's going to fall. You can, you can know for sure that this Jew... You know where to find him at 7 a.m. He's going to be in shul. Don't matter when there's a meeting. Don't matter. doesn't matter. There are some people that when they travel, now they could afford this. I'm not saying we could all afford this. But minyan is so important to them. They don't travel. And if, if there's no minyan, and if there's not going to be a minyan and they have to go, they'll bring 10 people with them. Nine, Rabbi. Okay, Hazakabaduk, nine people. <laughs> right? They bring nine people with them. Because minyan is important. And if it means losing money, it's okay. I'll lose money. But I'm going to make sure I have a minyan where I go. Because minyan is more important than money. And I'm not saying that there's, again, halakha, halakha doesn't always uh, require that I uh, need to spend the, the amount. Okay, so see the halakha. But sometimes, this is what God expects of us and He demands of us. And to be a bechukotai Jew, to be more than just a observant Jew, we have to be ready to, to do it like clockwork. You want to know where this guy is? You go meet him. I told you many times, there was a fellow one time, he gave, me, uh, he gave me an envelope in the shul. He was waiting for, for these two rabbis to meet him. He had to give him a nice check for the office. And um, the businessman was in the synagogue lobby. He's waiting, he's looking at his watch. He realizes that the rabbis were running late. He sees me there, he says, Ms. Rai, are you going to be here for a few more minutes? I said, yes. He said, okay, two rabbis, very big rabbis are going to be coming in here. Hand in these checks. So I, I take the two checks. Of course, I didn't look. I didn't feel like it was honest to look. But I was very tempted to look. How much is he giving them? Okay, I didn't look. It wasn't my place. <laughs> then the two rabbis come in. He, as he leaves, they come in the other side. He just, they just missed him. They were very worried. Oh my gosh, we missed him. He left. I said, who are you looking for? He said, so-and-so. I said, okay, well, he just left. But have no fear. The checks are here. <laughs> and I gave him the two checks. And uh, they, they thanked me. And they were so excited. They looked. They opened it right in front of me. And they opened the check, and I, I looked at I couldn't believe how much was written on it. Each check, $125,000. Each check. The guy didn't wait for a thank you. 
He didn't wait for uh, a kiss and, uh, you know, praising him, nothing. I have a chabruta waiting. Kavata itim la Torah. So we need to have that chok in our day. Chok velo ya'avod. Nothing's going to make me give up this hour. Chukotai telech, who says the pasuk. Are we ready to go in the ways of Hashem, in the path of Hashem, but not just doing, doing even when it means losing money. Even if it means a little bit of a financial hit, I'm ready. I'm ready, Hashem, to do and to serve. Bechol me'odecha. My cousin, and I'll close with this, my cousin told me a great story of his brother-in-law, Morris Shalom, great guy in Brooklyn. And um, he told me the story that uh, he was working many years ago for PwC, this guy, Morris Shalom. He was working for PwC, an accounting firm. And it was an early Shabbat, it was the winter. Friday afternoon, he looks at his watch, he realizes it's getting close to Shabbat. He closes up his laptop, he gets his stuff, he gets into the train. 20 and 30 minutes later, he looks up, he realizes he's in the Bronx. By mistake, he took Uptown. Shabbat's like 45 minutes away. He's not going to make it in time on the train. He gets out of the train station. He gets into a cab. He tells the guy, I need you to go as fast as you can. Don't worry about red lights. Don't worry about stop signs. I'll pay whatever tickets you get. And the guy's he's jetting as fast as possible. He gets out of, he's texting his wife the whole time, like, listen, if I'm not home for Shabbat, don't get worried, but I'm stuck on the highway, there's crazy traffic, I took the train the wrong way, but don't worry, just be with the kids and have a good Shabbat just in case. And he was texting her back and forth, they were in touch, and he texts her as the 18 minutes, he used the 18 minutes. He gets the sunset, right the last second that you're allowed to break Shabbat, he gets out of the tunnel, of the, the battery tunnel, the Hugh L. Carey tunnel these days, okay? He gets out of the tunnel. He texts his wife, honey, I'm going to be home in a few hours, but uh, I'm in Brooklyn. He st- tells the cab driver to pull over. He hands him his wallet. He hands him his laptop. He hands him his money, his cell phone. He says, you're going to hold on to these for me. And he texts his wife, what's your cell phone, sir? I'll reach out to you tomorrow night after the Sabbath. You're going to hold on to these for me. I cannot go forward. It's my Sabbath. You're gonna, I'll pick him up tomorrow night. He gets out of the cab and he starts walking down the Prospect Expressway all the way to his house on, uh, in, uh, in Flatbush. Could you imagine this? My cousin said he ate with him that Friday night. And they're singing, they're enjoying. And all of a sudden he says, oh, craziest thing happened today. I, uh, I was in the thing, the train, I took it the wrong way. And I wound up uh, in the Bronx and I had to take a cab. And now the guy's holding on to my wallet. <laughs> l'chaim, l'chaim. He's like, what do you mean l'chaim? How are you, how you so calm? He's like, the guy didn't matter to him. Keeping Shabbat. I lost my money. I lost a laptop. The guy's going to steal it. Okay. But Shabbat. Not that it's okay because I'm going to keep Shabbat and God's going to give it back to me. Doesn't matter. Give it back to me or no, it's irrelevant. When you love someone, when a guy's going out with a girl, they have a very important date. You don't care that he's missing the Rangers game four at uh, Madison Square Garden. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, we're going. We got tickets. You don't feel bad. Good luck to you. I have, a, I have a date. I have something else. I have another occasion. Don't matter. He's not, th- he's not thinking. It's okay because when I go out with my wife, she'll pay me back and she'll give me a, a Rangers game six ticket. <laughs> it's not what he's thinking. He's not doing it because she's going to give him back a ticket. He's doing it back because I'm ready to lose tickets for you, honey. I love you. Are we ready to lose money for Hashem? And this guy, he said that comfortable the whole Shabbat. Saturday night, he called the guy up, got his address. He drove all the way there. The guy, he's like, you know, I can't believe you just left with a random taxi driver. Valuables. All your Jew would do that. That's what the guy said. All your Jew would do that. That's what happens when you have something that money can't buy, my friends. Ashrenu v'matov chalkenu. God bless all of us. We're doing amazing. We're so committed. Baruch Hashem. We're learning every day. We're praying every day. We do keep Shabbat. We do keep kosher. We do have integrity. But today let us ask ourselves, are we ready to go to the next level? And even though it means losing money, are we ready to be more than just Jewish? <laughs> right? 
Are we ready to be a Jew full in the fullest sense of the word? Are we able to look proud at ourselves and say, I am Bechukotai Jew. I am a Chok Jew. I am a clockwork Jew. Nothing is going to make this bottle not fall. Nothing's going to move me from my Shabbat observance. Nothing's going to move me from my learning. Nothing's going to move me from my prayer. Nothing in the world. Because I love Hashem. And I love Him even with my money. Even though it means losing money. I am ready to be committed. To be kavata itim. To koveya. When something is kavua. When something is set. It's 50-50. That's all that God cares about. And then when we are reaching this level. We will be zochet to all the blessings of our holy and beautiful Torah. We'll stop over here everyone. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye.